right, human geographers, the next thing we're going to take a look at are agricultural regions. This is really important to our class because it tells us where certain things are grown or raised. The first one we're going to take a look at is pastoral nomadism. This is usually done in dry, semi-arid areas, and it's a nomadic style of moving herds around from one field to another. So basically what you have is a bunch of nomads that may have goats or sheep, and they're in one field, and as those goats or sheep eat up that field, they move them to another field where there's new foods, and they do this in a cycle. Some of the most common areas of pastoral nomadism is in South Central Asia, where they have cattle. Also in East Africa, they do. In the Middle East, they have camels. And in Siberia, they have reindeer. And usually what you use these animals for is milk or hides. And occasionally they'll be used for food. A second agricultural region we're going to take a look at is plantation. Plantations are large farms that specialize in one crop. They're usually located in hot, humid areas where they have cheap labor. Typical plantation crops include coffee, tea, sugar, rubber, bananas, tobacco, and cotton. And when we look at a map of the earth, it is the dark green areas that we see again in usually tropical areas. A third agricultural area for us to look at is shifting cultivation. When we look at the map of the earth, shifting cultivation is the lime green areas generally found in tropical and rainforest regions. Shifting cultivation is also called slash and burn and swidden. Basically what happens are the local people that live there will go in and cut down and burn the rainforest that is in that area. Those trees become ash, which becomes fertilizer. See, the ground is not very fertile prior to that ash getting into it. They then plant crops. The problem is that land is only good for a handful of years before all the nutrients are burned out. So those local people will then go into the next part of the rainforest, cut and burn that area, and plant crops there. They then leave that old area fallow for about 5, 10, maybe 20 years. Some small trees and plants do grow into that old area. They then return, cut it down, burn it, but this time the land is only good for a handful of years. This is why in a lot of these tropical areas, the rainforest is being cut down at such large rates because the land is only good for a few years and those locals continue to go into the rainforest to burn it down and try to find more farmland. Our next form of agriculture we're going to look at is mixed crop and livestock. We tend to find this in the Midwest United States, Canada, and Northern Europe. This is when we grow crops such as corn just to feed the livestock such as cows. This makes the cow a fatter animal which makes a juicier steak and it makes the cow weigh more so that the farmer makes more money. We also find that cows that eat things like grains also produce more milk which is good for the dairy farmer. So the next agricultural region we're going to look at is grain. Grain producing areas are usually in drier areas like prairies and plains. China, Canada, India, Russia, and the United States are well known for their grain producing regions. There are two types of wheat that we do want to talk about. We got spring wheat, which is planted in the early spring and reaped in the early autumn. And this is grown in places like Canada, the Dakotas, and Montana. We also have winter wheat. Winter wheat is planted in the fall and harvested in the early summer. And this is grown in places like Oklahoma, Kansas, and Colorado. This is very important because you can almost double crop this in your country. You're able to produce much more amounts of food. So by being able to grow through two seasons, more food is able to be put on the market. Commercial gardening is another agricultural region that's very important to us. Commercial gardening is market gardening. It's also called truck farming. This is when we grow what we typically see in the produce section of a supermarket. Broccoli, tomatoes, lettuce, oranges, apples, 
salad vegetables. It's usually in warmer areas like the Southeast United States where you have a very long growing season. Usually we find this in very wealthy areas because they have the land that can be dedicated to crops that aren't necessarily for survival, but more for preference. So the next agricultural region we're going to want to move to is dairy. If we didn't talk about it right now, it would be an utter disappointment. But anyway, dairy is really important to analyze because we usually find it only in MD seeds. It is very expensive to be able to feed dairy cows. They use up a lot of land, or if you feed them grain, it can be very expensive. So we typically only see dairy farming in MD seeds. Now, one part of dairy farming that's very important to understand is something called the milk shed. The milk shed is the distance from an urban area that milk can be produced. In the 1800s, the milk shed was very, very short because dairy spoiled immediately. So when the cow was milked, the dairy had to get to market immediately. But now we can pasteurize. And when we pasteurize milk, it enables us to be able to go farther out. So now milk sheds can be 200, 250 miles away from an urban center. All urban areas in Europe and North America have a milk shed. And that milk shed usually can be a couple hundred miles now because of pasteurization. The next agricultural region we really want to take note of is Mediterranean. Mediterranean agriculture is found in the Mediterranean Sea area, but we also find it in Southwest Australia, Chile, California, and Southern Africa. Mediterranean climates are well known to be dry summers and cooler, wet winters. Crops from these areas are usually figs, dates, olives, and grapes, especially grapes for making wine, as all of these areas are also known to be very famous for their wine production. The last agricultural region we're going to take note of is livestock ranching. Livestock ranching is usually about raising cattle, especially beef cattle. Large areas are needed because the animals consume so much grasses. So the Western United States, Western Canada, and Brazil are very well known for their livestock ranching because they have the land to be able to dedicate to being able to raise these large animals. It's similar to pastoral nomadism, except that you're staying in one area as the animals go from like section of field, section of field, grazing. <laughs> 